Hey friends, we are back at Nikki T Live. I am your host, Nick Taylor, and today I am hanging out with, uh, I forgot to ask you how to pronounce your name, but is it is it Mat Matia or Matija? Oh, you said it right the first time, so it's Matia. Okay, okay. Matia, is it Sosik? Uh, very close, but yeah, don't bother okay. me the last name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, thanks for uh, coming on. I know you're super busy. Um, we're going to be talking about WASP today, WASP Lang. Um, but before we get into that, maybe just let folks who might not know who you are a bit about yourself. Uh, if you want to talk about how you got into tech too, that's great. Uh, and shamelessly plug anything. <laughs> Sure, sure, of course. Yeah, happy to chat about all these topics. But yeah, first of all, uh, Nick, thanks for inviting me to your podcast. I've been following it for a while. Plus, I've been l lurking around in, at your Discord. So I, I think it's a very, I think it's a very like a warm and welcoming community. I, I, I enjoy it a lot. Uh, yeah, very thanks. shortly about me, and then you know, Nick, feel free to dig into any specific kind of avenues that you would like to explore. But shortly about myself, uh, I'm Matia, as Nick said. Uh, I am a software developer myself kind of been doing it for the last uh, I think almost now kind of almost 15 years uh, so I've kind of tried you know everything from started more more like you know C++ uh, algorithms uh, then I was using it in bioinformatics mostly at the university and then got more into industry I kind of started with you know web development uh, got some objective C kind of tried stuff from Java Python uh, you know, went from Angular, Backbone, jQuery, React. So, you know, went through all okay. the stack change across the last 10 years. And it, I mean, that was also part of the story, uh, why we okay. got an idea for what we are doing right now with Wasp. So, yeah, that's it in short, you know, developer doing a lot with uh, web and also in the past with other stuff. And yeah, super excited to be here. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, let's kind of touch in on what WASP, it, when you when you refer to WASP, do you call it WASP or do you say WASP Lang or? Yeah, uh, um, just, just WASP is fine, yeah. Okay, so uh, so let's talk about WASP is because uh, I, I saw one stream with Anthony, we were talking about this briefly before Anthony Campolo and I, I didn't catch all yeah. of it because I, I had something on the go at the time, but uh, I guess kind of explain what it is. Like I know that I know it uses React. You can do full stack web development, but what separates? Because I also know you were in Y Combinator, so I, I'm I'm really curious. Like, what was the compelling argument for one YC to say, "Hey, yeah, let's back you," and also like, yeah, what's what's the philosophies kind of behind Wasp Lang? Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, we also kind of, you know, changed the perspective a bit from since we started. But I mean, it was mostly the, the messaging, but the core idea was always the same. But yeah, like super succinctly, you know, what WASP is, uh, I mean, you know, just functionally, you can think of it as of a web framework. So a full stack web framework, kind of, you know, in, in the full sense of that word in 2023. So WASP is taking yeah. care of everything from database to your, you know, backend and backend functions to your front end and, and also deployment. So Wasp is kind of covering like really the full stack for you. And under the hood right now, it uses React, uh, Node.js, and you know, like we just use Prisma for the database. So mostly Postgres, but you could also plug okay. in Mongo in the, in the future and, and similar. So that's pretty much gotcha. it. I, I would say kind of maybe the only kind of what makes it special, you know, compared to some other stuff out there and similar, you, you know, is the length part, which is kind of both uh, sometimes scary to people, <laughs> but I will okay. explain in a moment, you know, why it isn't. So the main secret of WASP is that, you know, it's not trying to replace your existing stack. So as okay. I mentioned, like, you know, you can imagine it as a glue between your React and Node code, really. And what the WASP does is, you know, it offers you a simple configuration language. So, you know, it's almost like a JSON, but just you know, okay. a bit nicer, just a bit nicer to read. So very declarative, uh, like very human readable. So WASP offers a simple configuration language in which you can this, this, you know, describe some high level features of, you know, which you can pretty much see in any web application, like authentications, uh, pages, okay. uh, routing, sending emails, uh, I don't know, like, you know, running cron jobs, for example. So we make all of that super, also like, like, you know, API, basically blurring that API line between front and the server is also a big, kind of big part of what Wasp does, similar okay. to you know, the type safe, type safe RPC and similar. So we also have our own version of that. 
So basically, the main thing of Wasp is to go for that isomorphic feeling, you know, that, that you feel you're developing an application which kind of is like, you know, one, one, one united, uh, united product. So okay. that's the story. Cool. And I would say kind of the, the main trick is in us having this configuration language, which basically helps us uh, cut on a lot of boilerplate. So that was kind of our main issue you know, with development before. It was a lot of duplication, especially between front and back end. So one of okay. our main missions is to cut down on the boilerplate. Okay, gotcha. So it's it's a DSL of like, uh, I guess, is that correct in saying? Oh, sorry, you can just repeat, it is what? Is it a DSL then, I guess? Ah, DSL, exactly. Yes, it, it's a DSL. Uh, and okay. I mean, we, we always called it DSL before it used to be on our front page. But you know, turned out all the all of us use DSLs every day from HTML, SQL, and similar. It's not actually that common term in uh, kind of web development space. So we are okay. mostly using now configuration, co co simple configuration language is kind of what what we use these days. Okay, and I guess one question: I I, I kind of work on infrastructure now. Like I'm not like uh, at Netlify. I'm not really at the AWS level, I'm kind of at a higher level, but I am still kind of working on infrastructure to some degree. Is is the inspiration for the DSL kind of like a, a Terraform or something, you know, where it's kind of infrastructure as code? Like I know I know you're not exactly necessarily saying like this is the web server no, and stuff, it's, but it's, it's a, it's a very kind good of inspired comparison. Like yeah, yeah. No, it's okay. a very good comparison. We kind of see as our main role models is let's say Terraform or one on one side which is, you know, pretty okay. much DSL for infrastructure, also abstracts, you know, different providers. So you can use AWS, Azure, or, or Google, okay. which is also kind of, let's say the, the goal for Wasp, you know, ideally you could use React, uh, Vue, or Svelte on the front end, and still Wasp would take care of all the other stuff for you. So we are trying okay. to be that way of, uh, of agnostic long-term. And yeah. on the other hand, uh, Ruby on Rails was also kind of a big inspiration for us on the web framework side, you know, because okay. it was opinionated, and I provided the best practices out of the box. You know, it was kind of this is the best way to do it, and don't you know just just go with it. It's going to cover you for ninety nine percent of the cases. So okay. you know, kind of we very we very much although you know it was kind of even before our age as developers, but uh, we believe in that concept of kind of better is included experience and you know mm -hmm. providing the figure, figured out best practices uh, to developers. Yeah, no, for sure it's. It, there's always a trade-off with being opinionated and like you know, hey, do whatever you want because like, like I remember uh, React is be uh, React uh, has become more opinionated now, but like, uh, you know, like there's stuff like server components and stuff. But before it was kind of I don't want to say wild wild west, but like you know, if if you were starting a React project like like I started working with React back in like 2016, you know, yeah. the you know you had state in the component but you know redux came at that point but then all of a sudden it was always like choose however you want to manage your state and that's where we had this explosion of state management libraries and stuff where yeah. you know there's no kind of like standard way they they kind of address that i think a little bit with stuff like um use reducer and so on and but um but you know what i mean like sometimes you know, there's the the uh, the other end of the spectrum, something like Angular, which literally has everything, including yeah. the kitchen sink. You know, which yep. it's not it's good and bad. You know, so it's like uh, I, I think yeah, exactly. You just want to be able to build whatever you're building, I guess, and you know, you, that's where you make the decision if you go with something more opinionated or not, I guess. But uh, true, exactly. Like, I mean, any framework or, or any abstraction is kind of putting some opinions on you. Otherwise, you know, it couldn't do any of its job, right? So I think yeah. that, that's inevitable. And for us, it was kind of the similar experience. We were actually first using Angular JS. I'm saying we, like me and my brother, who's actually my co-founder. <laughs> okay. So I have, a, I, have, I have a twin brother who's doing all of this with me, kind of from, from yeah. the start and, and even before. Uh, so yeah, we actually first started using after, you know, jQuery and Backbone. Angular was like the first, you know, reactive, super cool thing that came to the, to the market. So, you know, even okay. before the, it, it, was, it was still called Angular JS. So React yeah. felt like it was a bit like, you know, it was like a lot of freedom out there. It was a lot of freedom, yeah. but also community hasn't yet figured out the best practices. You know, just as you yeah. said, like you could use whatever, your Redux or something else. Like there was like five approaches to any problem and there was yeah. no clear winner out there, which is great. But yeah. at the end, when you just want to build stuff and you want to make sure that 
you are following the best practices like all the others. That's kind of what you know what what slows you down actually. So yeah. you know, our yeah. idea was kind of you know now after let's say almost ten years of React and Node, you know we can see some patterns. So let's try to extract those patterns into a DSL, a language, and again mm -hmm. let you write your custom logic with React and and Node. Okay. Yeah, no, that's super cool. I, I think, you know, like, I think initially I was like, I just want to build my own stuff. But like, it, uh, nowadays, I'm just like, I really just, I, I need to be productive, I need to build an application, or I need to do something, you know, so, you know, you, you put your ego aside or whatever, and just say like, okay, this is how, you know, WAPS does it, or this is how Angular says you should do things. I'm just gonna do it because at the end of the day, it probably doesn't matter those opinions that were taken, you know, and again, it, it, it I, I hate to say it, but it's always the classic senior developer, you know, it depends kind of slash trade-offs, but that it really is that, you know, like people, there's a reason why people love Ruby uh, on Rails that you mentioned, you know, uh, there's like, you know, con uh, con you know, convention over configuration, which yeah. can be magic but if you know those things you can move really quickly you know so it's uh yeah true no i i agree like 100 percent. i think you know I, there's always going to be different people with different needs but i guess you know also as we kind of you know, grew older and kind of got into more let's say uh maybe result oriented projects you know it's, it just becomes yeah. more important to get stuff done right and then you realize yeah, okay exactly. i just I, I don't want to fight my tools although it's fun but for this type of project, I just need to get it done out and get it out first, and then we'll figure out: is it even going to survive or not? And yeah. you know, am I, am I going to you know, kind of iterate on the technology or not? Yeah, no, for sure. So um, uh, I'll, I'll drop. Uh, I dropped a link to Wasp Lang where people can check it out. Uh, I know we're gonna do a bit of an intro to it, but I also know uh, I'll drop a link to it. We, we had discussed this uh, a, a few weeks ago because I know you had to reschedule just because, uh, well, not just because you, you had a new board, so very valid reason to, to reschedule. So, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm super happy that you're able to come back. Um, and we were talking more recently and you're talking about um, you have this uh, app generator that uses GPT now. Um, exactly. So I'm, I'm not sure how you want to approach things today. Like, do we want to look at wasp to begin with and then maybe go to the web app generator or is the web app generator get us to where we can kind of explain things still i think so yeah i think it will be a cool way to kind of kickstart an application and you know just see what we got out and maybe i can okay. kind of lead you through the code through the code and show some stuff and yeah then okay. you can either try it out or whatever is fun yeah i think okay cool, cool. All right. So yeah, G GPT get... generator is quite is quite interesting, you know, from multiple perspectives. So I can chat about uh, all of them. Yeah, I mean, one yeah. is that one is just that you know it works and it can give you an app which works or almost works uh, yeah, yeah. quite quickly. But other is also you know kind of maybe we can talk also later about kind of the future of, of LLMs, how it's going to work with uh, frameworks and languages, and there there is like you know like just was being so declarative and kind of so succinct. It fits very well into the you know just LLM context and the way that LLM learns stuff. So that's one yeah. of the things that is not is not maybe super visible yet here, but that's something that we are pretty excited uh, in the future. And it's kind of you know one of our main pieces for 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 Wasp. I'm gonna drop a link to Wasp on GitHub if folks want to check that out as well, and uh, feel free okay. to give it a star as well. So okay, so I'm in the generator right now. I'll bump it up one more just for folks watching the yeah, recording. Look, look um, good, yeah. So am I using this form here to generate it, or or what's the process here? Uh, exactly. So you can fill out the form basically with just app name and description, and you have a couple okay. of templates uh, below if you just want to prefill it with something or you know see some examples. Okay. So you know. Okay. It, yeah, you shouldn't go too too crazy. Like you know, it should be like something like uh, you know, we have blog, oh. it has users, it has comments. Uh, so okay. Some people try to say you know, like make Facebook but purple, <laughs> which is a bit too yeah. oh, okay. not yeah, informative. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not informative enough for. <laughs> but no, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna go with the app name they suggest here. And oh sure, yeah. so my, my my plant is a, a classic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with uh, I'll go with lime here, I guess. Uh, creativity level. So, and, and as I'm going through these, I guess explain this. So these are prompts. These are tokens you'll be giving to the prompt for GPT. Is that what these are? 
Yes, exactly, exactly. So all of this is going to end up in like one or actually more prompts. So okay. you, you can choose if you if you want it to be kind of more creative and possibly do more stuff for you, but there is more also more room for mistakes. And okay. yeah, for, for now we support username and password on S not. That was like our okay. we want. Yeah, but I could see how this could be interesting in the future because as there's you know other providers like once you have the the DSL yeah. handling you know like Okta, Auth Zero, Clerk, or whatever uh, social logins yeah. like you're saying. Yeah, yeah, we could also add integrations with uh, some other services. So like there there is potential okay. to make it uh, you know like more options, make it smarter. But you know for, oh. for now and you just get, ah you just get oh to, I forgot to describe you, it okay oh if you, if you no but if if you click on my plan it's going to pre-fill the whole form for you so just go below to the examples. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, let's do that. Okay, and just, so my and just plans. click on use this idea, so it's going to pre-fill everything, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So, so basically, it's like, you know, CRM for your plants, reminding you when you have to water it. And, okay. Uh, similar, yeah. And now you can see live, it's actually starting to generate stuff. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, it's, so we have some code here, but it's still working. If you go to the top, mm -hmm. you can see the steps that it's going through. So maybe I can just quickly explain. <laughs> so yeah. uh, the first step, so the first step is that it's going to be kind of okay so we have some hard-coded skeleton which is you know like some super super, super basic stuff but then yeah. basically what it does from your prompt it creates a plan you know so it's going to okay. say okay you have, you have plants you have, you want to water them so you know so we need like one query for watering the plant we need another okay. action for actually doing something so it's going to make a textual like another prompt which is going to feed back into gpt and generate the you know the target code so plan okay. is actually the slowest step as it takes here, as it says here. And yeah. we are using GPT GPT four for that. Okay. And you know, since uh, since after the plan it's after that it's pretty straightforward, we could use GPT three point five, which is much okay. faster and and much cheaper. So you know, we even yeah. kinda of did some did some comparisons to kind of other stuff. So it, and that was I think a good move. We are pretty pretty cheap altogether to uh to beat out the whole application. Okay. Okay, so I yeah. see here stuff going on. So there's two queries. So I'm, is this creating a REST API yeah. for get plants, get plant, uh, create water? Uh, exactly, entities it, or data models, yeah. Okay, so it, this is this is creating the entities that Prismo will consume to create yeah. to create the ORM, the object object relational mapper, and then okay, and then we get a few pages created. Okay, and exactly. I guess one question I have about this is. Uh, I think I know the answer, but just want to be clear. This is like a good starting point, right? Like if I want my plants app, it, it doesn't mean like it's going to know everything to generate for my plants app. Obviously it's like, I'll get, I'll, I'll get a really good boilerplate of how I can start getting work yeah. working and yeah, then yeah, just yeah. go from there. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, at some points, you know, it can, it, it, it's even going to try maybe do some API calls and stuff. So it can try to get smart, but still like okay. you, you should not expect it's, it's going to implement the whole application for you. So I would yeah, say exactly. kind of it's 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 a smart uh, customizer uh, customized crowd starter pretty much you know. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so let's kind of I I guess uh, two questions. One, well, not uh, first thing is we'll go through uh, the files here just to go th uh, explain yeah. them a bit. But in terms of the editor, uh, so like this is clearly a UI that shows you all the files that are available. Um, it, does this become the editor, or do, do, do you generate like a do you kind of create a template from this and then you have a yeah, repo yeah, yeah. on GitHub? Yeah, so at, the, at this point, what we have right now, so you can see the files on the left and you can explore them, but you can't edit them right now. We haven't edited yeah. yet. So you know what, okay. you, what you can do basically, you, you can download or you can download everything as a zip locally and then run it locally with you know, Wasp Start. Okay. But yeah, but, cool. e, but we plan to edit in the future, you know, even like an online editor, maybe even deploy it from here right now. So we definitely yeah. plan to add more like you know interactivity, especially okay. because sometimes cool. you need to you need to fix a couple of mistakes before you can move okay, on. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you know it's so it's kind of you know you, so you don't have to kind of redo it every time that you, you know, spot a mistake or want to change something. So that yeah, that's yeah. coming soon in, in in the V2. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, so let's let's look at the first thing here, which is the WASP file. So it's uh because uh, this is. I mean, we can definitely talk about the other things, but the other things are just yeah. Uh, no, I, mean, I think main. I think uh, Wasp React, is a good start. So. It, it, it's it's actually that core, you know, it's the that heart of Wasp, which I was mentioning, uh, that yeah. configuration file, which kind of specifies, uh, let's say, your application in a high level 
uh, language. Okay. So I, I guess I guess it's going to be pretty obvious to you. <laughs> so I'm just going to let <laughs> you maybe uh, go through yeah. it. Yeah. I yeah, yeah, I guess I'll talk through it. And if there's stuff that doesn't seem clear, I'll, I'll bring it up. But um, yeah. so like you said, it, it's JSON like, but uh, are, are, are almost even almost more JavaScript like than yeah. JSON. But but it, it regardless, it, it's it's pretty easy to read. So like uh, this is, uh, you know, I, I don't I won't necessarily go through everything here, but we, this is the version of Wasp we're using. This is going to be the title of the app, I guess. Um, yeah. On the client, uh, we need a root component where the whole React application can mount. Um, yeah. The DB section is to uh, obviously have our database. And I, I guess under the database is the assumption it's an ORM. And for now, or maybe in future, there's more. But there, for now, it's just Prisma. And then... Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I haven't really used Prisma myself, to be honest. So is is client preview features, is that something from Prisma or is this something Wasp specific? Yeah, it, uh, no, it, uh, this, this is a specific flag from Prisma that we kind of enabled uh, in here. I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% okay. what it does. I know it was some like new option, but I think it's even now in the newest version, it's already by default on. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, and yeah. then we have our auth section, which is like... Uh, uh, so we have the user entity, which is the user table that will be in our database, which the ORM will hit uh, Prisma. Um, uh, curious for the database, uh, is there, I'm assuming you're using one particular database at the moment. Uh, is it Postgres or MySQL? Or... Exactly. No, so by, by default, it's Postgres. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then, okay, so then we have like our, our login method, which is an endpoint, I'm assuming here to passing the username and password. Is that what that is? Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty pretty much when you specify a method here, uh, Wasp is going to kind of prepare everything for you. So you will get the form okay. generated that you can just, uh, you, you will also be able to see it in the uh, login JSX page. But yeah, okay. Wasp takes care of everything. You just need to plug it in. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then we have some methods here, like if the auth is failed or succeeded. Yeah. So we go back to the login or we go back to the root of the app, I guess. And then... Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and and so then here we have the the routes, the pages, and stuff. And uh, this is a question. Uh, this is what I'm curious about with Wasp at the moment, because I don't have a fully formed understanding yet. So like obviously, like the files are over on the side here, and um, this isn't is, is this this isn't Next.js. This is just like a yeah, create yeah, app so, kind so, of thing. Yeah, exactly. So so it's it's not like folder based structure. Actually, the only okay. structure that we that we impose on you is that you have to have client, uh, server, and shared folders. So this is okay. how you separate, or you know, you call the basically. Then you can have by by type, you can have pages, or you can you can group it by feature, like billing. Okay. So we we don't have a folder based structure, right? Like the next next step. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So this is why we say route for the login route or in the page, just to be explicit what they are. And uh, okay. And then yeah, exactly. So I mean, so, yeah. So I mean, the, the, this is kind of the interesting part, you know. Because, you know, it looks like a JSON, but you can you yeah. can actually import import your you know your functions, your uh, components from from uh, JavaScript okay, yeah. or TypeScript. So this is kind of this boundary because basically you have the glue, but at some point you can just uh, go extend to your you know normal code. So this is the okay, magical gotcha. part of, of of Wasp. Okay. So, so stuff like at client is an alias to the folder there. I don't know if that's yeah, like so, so at, pack or exactly. So, so at client, yeah, at client is a keyword that we make sure it's it's what happens actually under the hood. Okay, cool. And then we have some more routes and pages here. I won't go through all of them, but okay. And then we have the entity. So essentially, this is the database schema down here. Yeah. Um, about what uh, uh, what's required, uh, and then. We have, uh, I guess, what we have here is our REST API. Um, and then exactly. Oh, I mean, although, you know, so, so, I mean, it actually uh, works as TRPC, as a type, type safe RPC. So you, you don't see oh, okay. the actual API calls. Instead, you want, you know, you, so you just have that feeling like you define a function on the backend and it's immediately type safe and available on the front. Okay, okay. It does the code gen for the types and everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. cool. Okay, so we'll we'll definitely pull down the project. So uh, I guess now here I click run app locally and that'll pull down the zip file. Is that what that is? Uh, yes, you can do this. 
and we can we can yeah. try it. If it if if it's going to have too many mistakes, you know, I can just give you like another GitHub repo I have ready. Uh, <laughs> but we, we can we can try it. Oh no worries. It, it it's a live stream. It's it's always expected that things aren't perfect. Um, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let me just close. Uh, I was working on some remix stuff. Uh, hold on a sec here. Okay. Uh, I think I installed the Wasp CLI when we were going to do our stream before, but maybe it's not up to date. So I'm just going to run this. Uh, yeah, you can just run the Wasp version and it should be, or you can just yeah, download the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. So I'm on Wasp. Wasp uh, version should give you like zero. Oh, over. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, was version. Uh, okay, yeah, so I'm on the one that we just used. Okay. Yeah, zero eleven one. The, the, the latest version. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna download the zip, and then let's come here. Just gonna go to my dev folder, and then streams. Gonna gonna zoom in here a bit so folks can see this. Okay, cool. And let me just yeah, go maybe, maybe just zoom in a bit. File. This is good, yeah. All right, uh, I'm just going to do it through the UI. And then, so my plant, so, okay, so let's put that there and let's put it under streams. Okay. So now I'm going to do code, uh, where is it? Uh, my plant. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's open up the project here. Okay. So. Again, we, we don't really, I don't think we really need to go through these things here because it's just the yeah. assumption here is folks know what React is. If you, if you aren't familiar with React, definitely check out the React docs. Um, but this is essentially, it, it's an application, right? It, it's only, a, it's a spa, right? It's it's really meant for building applications. Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. And then we have our server part, like you said. And then the shared, this is, uh, okay. Uh, the shared I see have the TS config here so that it, it works for both the client and the server. Is is the shared folder also used if people want to potentially add like universal code where it can be used the client and the server? Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. So th th that is the point of shared. So you can share some functions which are kind of agnostic. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, and then we've got some environment variables and a few things here. So. Um, one thing that I find super interesting is there's no package JSON. Uh, yes, yes. So for for now, not because we are handling all of this under the hood. And okay. you know, if you want to, if you want, if you want to add dependencies, you are actually doing it in the Wasp file. So, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's also kind okay. of part of Wasp configuration. Yeah. Okay. So um, this this is definitely not a, a big deal at all. But I'm curious: uh, is there a ah. Wasp extension? Yes, yes, exactly. If you need, if you install a Wasp extension, you will get to like full LSP with auto completion and, okay. and everything. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and install that, and I'm also going to, uh, where is it? Uh, I'm just gonna drop a link to this for folks in the chat if they're yeah, interested. This is important. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's 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 almost you know obviously it's not a deal breaker, but it's something that people always expect to have. You know. Yeah, so, of course. So it's nice that you, you you thought about that ahead of time. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's and, I, I think kind of, kind of Prisma made it mainstream. You know, if you have your own uh, language, you have to have, of course, support for VS Code. So that's all totally expected. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so we have the we've I've unzipped everything. Uh, we're in a good state. So I'm assuming I'm going to use the Wasp CLI now uh, to to either install the uh, dependencies or run it for the first time, or what's so, the process? So, so first you should just do a migration. So it's like a boss okay. uh, DB, but you, you can actually see on, uh, go, 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 go back to instructions. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just see run the app locally. Uh, if you Where press on the I button, the orange oh, yeah, button sorry, here, disappeared. Yeah. And okay. now if you have to run boss DB migrate dev dev. Okay. Just, you know, just to apply the Prisma migrations to your database. And you'll see also probably there might be like a couple of errors that we might that we might need to fix, so we also see that. Okay, that's all good. And the uh, the GPT generator is something fairly new, so uh, like you said, there might be some issues with it, but it's it's it's, yeah, it's definitely no, it, an interesting it, it, way to get started. 
Yeah, no, it is just due to the nature of GPT, which is not deterministic. <laughs> you know, yeah, however, yeah, no, exactly. Uh, however many times you explain how to do something, it's something sometimes going to mess it up. It's usually yeah. something simple, like you know, like it imports something as a kind of absolute you know thing instead of being like specific thing. So it's usually like some small things. Okay. Let's see I did see worked. I don't know if it's an error. Uh oh yeah. Oh it says uh -huh, dev db does not is. exist. Uh, okay, I guess maybe you have to run so with Martin. Does it expect SQLite here or not? Uh, it's using SQLite. It's using SQLite, so you shouldn't you shouldn't need to run okay. anything, right? No. Okay. Okay. Well, it did continue, so it said database successfully set up. So maybe ah, that's okay. more of a warning. Ah, maybe it actually created it then. Okay. Okay. I think it's just going to create a new database. Okay. I mean, new, like, new um, SQLite uh, yeah. file. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, and then from here. Uh, yeah, the name for the migration it. yeah just 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 eat it or something it's standard uh, yeah okay stuff. okay and, and that's really just to confirm things like as you go to see what the migrations were so that it's it's you have more context to what it was for okay yeah. okay so okay so i see we have a migration okay, nice. file that what, what happened done, uh, yeah. yes so migrations you, you get it committed of course as in any result project and yeah, now it's I'll just, just you just have to run wasp start now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nice. I'm just going to say uh, initialize. There's nice. A... I like your shortcuts. Oh, shortcuts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, initialize repo. Initial commit. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. So now we go wasp and then. Uh, start. What was the? Oh, okay, yeah, start. Yeah, that that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's pretty much the, the main command you're going to need. Okay, so yeah. uh, oh, wow. I'm just going to come back to it. It's working. Nice. Yeah, it did load. Uh, I'll zoom this in. I'm just going to come back to the CLI for a sec here, just to show folks what kind of happened here. So, uh, Node Mon's running, um, and then there's you know it builds a few things. Um, Okay, it's uh, injecting .env to get the .env uh, config. And then it's in watch mode now, it looks like. And then, okay, cool. And then we're up and running and cool. All right, so yeah. that's yeah, awesome. I mean, typically so, here, we are, just, we are just running everything under the hood, which you would typically run manually. You, know, you typically run front-end server, back-end server. So, you know, yeah. both does it for you and it kind of gives you output uh, of everything. Cool, cool. All right, so I don't have an account, so I'll sign up. Uh, all right, yeah, sure. One password, why not? Yeah. Let's make this demo super secure. <laughs> uh, why is it not? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, let's go with Nick. Yeah, best to use the email. That's good. I don't know why it's not selecting it. Ah, uh, it complains. <laughs> uh, that's uh, whatever. Worst case, I'll just give it the super secure. Oh, there we go. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, save. Okay, cool. And let's sign up. Okay, so I created my account. It logged me in. And we're already at the point where, like, obviously, we, we have a boilerplate app here. So I can add a plant. I guess I I can do a few things here for fun, I guess. So I'll ah, just nice. call it, uh, uh, let's say, geranium. Okay, and you know your plans, one. I see. <laughs> and okay, cool. Yeah, I think this okay. number one actually is like uh, like how often do you need to water it? So this okay. is kind of you know, the variation the variations you, you see with GPT. Sometimes you know it assigns labels to the field. Sometimes it leaves it as placeholders, and then you, you don't see okay. if there's a the, the default value. But yeah, no, actually, I'm pretty kind of I'm pretty happy with how this went. This actually works, and you know everything everything is here. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I think I think this was super neat to uh, bootstrap something, and it, and it's different, you know, because like obviously there's stuff like create next app, create v app, uh, all the create whatevers, you know, remix, all, all the frameworks. Uh, I I think what's different here is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, one, it's it is for building applications, so it is a spa, but you know, you can by prompting like you know i would like uh you know a plants page i would like uh a, this other page and this other page it's it's very different from 
when you know you have a, a boilerplate from like all the you know well-known frameworks because they, they always give you the same thing you know like they do have yeah. templates like for example remix you can pick a stack so you can say like i want to use prisma in this but it's still just a it is a starting point like this but i think with this kind of yeah. approach with the gpt you can add more functionality without having to do it yourself out of at the beginning that's that's what yeah. i think seems different here yeah, definitely. I would say kind of you know it's ne next level of customization for your CRUD starter. That, that's how kind of you know kind of how we are seeing it. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's 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 an interesting topic. I, you know, I think in one way I would expect that in the future all frameworks are going to have something similar. <laughs> so okay, you know, yeah, it's yeah. kind of it's kind it's kind of logical if you if we can use GPT to customize further our starting experience. You know, why why shouldn't we do it? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And here we can see like all the operations that happen. So we got the plants, you know, authorization yeah. and all that stuff, uh, watering the plant. And um, so, yeah, so that's neat. Uh, one thing I noticed, uh, this is just more of a side note, but um, uh, you're using Nodemon right now in, in Node 20, which is still fairly new. They have a watch mode now. So like maybe in a future version, once Node is 20 is LTS, you could probably if you wanted to, you could make a requirement that it's node 20 and then you no longer have that node mon dependency. Um, but that's, yeah. uh, that's like yeah, exactly. for, just for, for now, an anecdote. For now, for now, we are sticking with LT, LTS, but it will be super cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. Kinda, you know in, in, in a big vision for Wasp, it wouldn't even just have to be bound to node. It can be Dino, it can be Ban. So that's kind of the, the beauty of, uh, you know, Wasp configuration stays independent of your underlying stack, ideally. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. Um, okay, so this this got us up running really quickly. Um, I did have some questions, like, what's the the dot wasp root? Is this um, a wasp root? Is, I think this is just for our CLI. You know, when it sees there is wasp root file, it knows basically this is a wasp project. Otherwise, you know, if you run wasp outside of the wasp project, it's going to say, hey, this is not a valid wasp project. Okay. I think cool. it's, I think it's not getting it's not getting even committed. I think it's just like like you know hidden. It's getting getting get ignored. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, I was thinking we could yeah. just to... yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, sorry. I think this was it. I, I think what's 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 interesting is maybe dot wasp file. You know, since you are showing okay. the the hidden the, the hidden folders. So dot wasp oh, okay, folder yeah, is basically yeah. dot wasp. You can you can explore it a bit. You know, it is what gets generated under the hood. So that's kind okay. of what, what you know what, what developers usually like to check to see what's happening. Okay, um, there there's definitely some things I want to try that we can do. Like we can install a dependency and maybe uh, maybe modify the the schema and potentially run another migration. Um, but but I am curious about the DSL. Like I guess. I I've never written a DSL or or a language, uh, so I'm curious like. Uh, like if we come back to the wasp file which where is the wasp ah, it's here main.wasp yeah oh yeah sorry okay yeah. so let me just close all these here for a sec so i guess how did you approach like the design of the dsl like you know like i mean in hindsight it's easy to, to understand now like oh yeah well app so that's like the root and stuff but like uh, you know i imagine you went through several iterations of this yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, no, it, it's it's a very interesting question, because yeah, it, it does look straightforward now, but you know the whole process wasn't wasn't straightforward. Uh, yeah, I think I you know our initial idea was kind of uh, we were we were fed up with all the different frameworks which kept you know exchanging. As, as I mentioned, you know, like we started with uh, jQuery and then Martin was using Backbone and Angular was kind of the first okay. you know kind of bigger bigger thing we used, and we kind of just got used to Angular. And then you know a, yeah. new, a new client or a startup we were working uh, kind of for, they decided to go okay. with React. It was super okay. new, but they heard it, you know they heard it was sexy and developers like it. It's going to make you know uh, hiring easier. Although they literally had three months to build MVP, and we said like, look, okay. we know Angular, and like maybe it should be better for us to build it in Angular. We are going to be faster, and you will get your MVP on time and you know with less hassle. But they were no like we want to bet everything on React. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And then we said, okay, you know, we are doing React, and we literally have to have to drop everything aside just to learn everything in React, how to do state okay. management, you know, how to use everything which is being used. So it, it felt like uh, we are reinventing a wheel a lot, 
because a lot mm -hmm. of things were similar, but on the other hand, we had to rediscover all the stuff that we were doing with Angular before. Okay. And, you know, kind of, kind of with that, we felt that we just had to really relearn the whole new stack just to build the same thing all over again. And, you know, the prompt for was was it, like, why shouldn't there be something like Terraform? Why shouldn't there be something when you just describe what you want? And it's always yeah. going to be the same. Like, no matter is it, you know, React now or Angular in the past or something third in the future, like, it shouldn't be so uh, tightly connected to your, basically, stack, your, your, your technology, the, the language or the framework you're using. So that okay. was the initial prompt for Wasp. And initially, we even kind of wanted, you know, to put much more stuff in Wasp. We said, like, yeah, like, you know, we'll get form generation in Wasp. Uh, you won't even have to write anything. Every, anything every, everything is going to be just Wasp. But okay. uh, quickly, Mar Martin kind of made sure that it, you know, it, it wasn't viable. I was a bit more of a dreamer back then. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, it's a cool idea, but, you know, just trying to build something which doesn't interact uh, in a nice way with existing stack, it, it would just be kind of, you know, too hard. Like, you know, you have yeah. NPM, you, know, you have all the NPM packages, uh, and basically you want to use everything before you build. So, you know, in the end, that was the guiding uh, mechanism before DSL. You know, we just said, okay. let's start with super obvious stuff, which was, yeah, it's like app definition, uh, pages and routing were like, were like the first thing. Uh, so, you know, we just started from there, and then we slowly okay. kind of added more and more features into the actual uh, DSL. I mean, and that's also okay. still the, the principle that we are following right now. Yeah. And like, obviously with something like the GPT generator, you, you don't have to craft this by hand. It's it, it obviously generated all this. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess I have a other couple questions too. So like, I mean, we're doing local development now and you know, uh, I, I could share it through like a, like Ngrok or like Netlify has a tunnel and stuff, but like, once I'm ready, like once I feel like, okay, my plants is, is ready for Y Combinator, we, let's go deploy this. What's, what's kind of the deployment story? Is it, is it meant for, you know, pass providers like, like Netlify, Vercel, Fly.io, or like what's, what's the story in terms of deployment? Yeah. Okay. So deployment story is pretty straightforward right now. So, okay. So what, what you can do with your application, you can basically run a uh, was build. And we are going to generate kind of, you know, the artifacts you need for deployment. So you will get Docker image for the backend and you will get static okay. files for the front end. And then, you know, you, you can just, if you want, you can take them manually and deploy them to, you know, you can just take files for the front end, put them on Netlify and, you know, you can okay. deploy on Heroku, your backend or similar. Ah, we, it's, so, so by default, you're on SQLite, so you have to change. The yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, you know, just to make okay, it easier so to run. So that, yeah. that was the initial story. Basically, we give you artifacts and, you know, you can just deploy them wherever you want, which is a bit more okay. manual work for you. But now we have also started adding kind of, you know, adapters for different providers. So, for example, okay, the yeah. first one that we added now was Fly. So literally okay. everything, that you have to, everything that you have to do right now is, you know, just Wasp de deploy Fly and you know, okay. just give us your environment variable and we are going to set up everything on Fly or Railway for you. Okay. Um... So in terms of the, uh, I get why we got this error here. So like we're using SQLite locally. Um, if, if I did want to bring this to production, uh, is there a way to uh, convert it to Postgres or? Yeah, or yeah exactly. The... exactly. So, yeah, so it, it is just a matter of changing uh, kind of property in your, you know, database configuration in the okay. uh, Postgres application. And, you know, you have, you have to run locally, Docker with Postgres probably, you know, just to make it work locally. Oh, okay, so, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's it's kind of meant, you know, for you to be that way, that you start quickly, and then when you realize you want to take it further, then you just switch to, yeah. to Postgres. Okay. And, and this is something that Wasp could potentially automate in the future, like, you know, get me ready for production uh, or... Or if you don't uh, tackle that, like it's obviously something that like people can automate themselves. Um, but yeah, okay, I mean, so... ideally, Wasp will do as much as it can. <laughs> so yeah, we, we would like to cover yeah. the whole pipeline of you know from building to deploying. Your, I think the I think okay. by default it's a SQL. I can look up the specific property for you. Okay. Oh, this is nice. Like, uh, it's got like IntelliSense as well, which is nice. Yeah, it has some auto completion uh, snippets and and similar. Okay. Yeah, let me see. Actually, wait, my 
which is my screen got stuck. It should be. I will actually, I will actually send you instructions. Okay, um, perfect. Uh, I'll just go check on Discord. Of course, correct. Migrating from SQLite to PostgreSQL. Okay, where's my Discord? Uh -huh. I got too many things. Oh, there yeah, we go. going to your Discord, it's right here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Lab. Uh, okay, yeah, got it. Okay. So basically, you just, you just have to set like, uh, yeah, you'll see it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, share it on the. The... Yeah, but okay, it's, it's not critical, I guess, right now. Oh, yeah, but uh, anyways, oh, might as well just show folks anyways. Uh, okay, so let me just drop that in the chat. Yeah, data database seeding is also a nice feature we added recently. Okay. So you can basically, like, you know, pre-fill your database with some stuff before you start uh, either, you know, locally or in production. And that's quite uh, helpful. Uh, did I? Oh yeah, here yeah. writing. Okay, so we have to say one seeds. of the stuff we added lately. Yeah. Okay, seeding. Okay, this is what we want to do. Okay, so set app.db system to Postgres. So let's do that. Oh, nice. It's. Uh... Uh, yes, I think it should be without. Uh, I think it should maybe be without the uh, apostrophes. I think I'm not hundred percent. Oh, okay, okay, okay. If it complains, then okay, this this should work. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. Okay. Uh, delete old migrations since there's SQLite light migrations. Okay. And I, I'll delete the migration lock too, I guess. Okay. Cool. And. Wasp start DB. Okay. And then you okay. will also have to provide like a environment variable, you know, like explaining where to connect to the database once you run it locally. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, I could have sworn so I. Yeah. I, it says I have. Doc oh, I don't have the daemon running. Maybe. If you go a bit up somewhere here, like a command, you can just copy paste. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. I just find it. I think I, I had Docker on my machine, and then somebody posted about a Docker alternative, and it and it aliases it, so it could be that. So, like worst case, I'll just reinstall Docker. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do that. Okay, it shouldn't take too long. I have a pretty fast internet connection. Docker for Mac. Okay, so and and while I'm doing this. Um, so if if you do opt to not use SQLite at this point, uh, at that point you're running uh, basically in Docker when you're doing local development. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So let's just run this. Do, do, do. Drop the big whale in the thing. Okay. I'm just trying to find. Ah. Uh... Is my bad for not having uh, for using. I, I haven't used Docker um, lately, so I, I I switched to that other thing just because they said it was more performant. But uh, I no, honestly no haven't used right. it. Uh, no, I also I always kind of forget all these commands. Yeah, Wait, yeah. I'm just trying to find uh, something here, but I will drop this okay. though if uh, folks are <laughs> interested in Docker. Cool. All right, so that's installed. So let me just start Docker. that start oh yeah there we go open give it a second no worries uh, okay yes i need to log in thank you one password okay okay so i'm logged in what's your uh, okay i gotta do all this okay. ah yeah full stack awesome. sure sounds good skip now you have to fill you have to fill in okay. the survey yeah <laughs> customer discovery yeah yeah Okay, so that's there. Uh, Docker for desktop should install the CLI, or is that a separate thing? Mm -hmm. uh, let's, see. let's see here. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I should run your. I have a command right here in the docs. I just my okay. Let me see. My yeah. my my browser got got stuck a bit, so <laughs> I can't really. Okay, wait. Ah, oh, no, no worries, no worries. Uh, where was it? Uh, language. if you search for Docker in documentation, it should it should show you the command. You can just run to run your locally or just search Docker. Okay, yeah, perfect. And no, no, this is customizing Docker file. You just, just search for Docker to find kind of the command for running database locally. Uh, okay, uh, build the Docker here, image. Here. No, no. Can you just send it to me, Martin, the command for running uh, Docker locally with Postgres on your computer? Yeah. Oh, basically, oh, yeah, I just forgot. So basically, what you what you can do, just run the Wasp start DB and it works for you. So many new features, huh? It's one of the new features okay. that I forgot. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> And then, oh, it also gets you. Uh, okay, that's cool. Do you still, yeah, do you still have to set up Martin in okay. the environment variable or anything? No. No, so just run both star DB and that's it, yeah. Okay, so now and it's cool. pulling down the Docker image dependencies and cool. All right. All right, so it says the database that's is ready. Cool. Okay, so the database is started now. Okay, so the database is running, so I need to open up another terminal to start uh, wasp again, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the best. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's do that. Okay. okay. So there we go. We're up and running again and we're back to my plants. And if I come to, oh yeah, there's no migrations. The, the, we're... Uh, delete migrations and create them again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's do that again. Uh, yeah. do, 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 do. Where was it? Uh, delete my, yeah, delete. Uh, my yeah, yeah, ex exactly. That's here. Okay. Okay. So let's stop this. Okay, there, and let's start Wasp again. Okay, so. It ran, but it's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wonder see. if that's because I'm. Okay. Ah, okay, uh, right. okay. That seems okay. Okay, so I won't be able to log yeah. in because we created a new yeah, database. Yeah. I think uh, you, so you have to create a new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's go for a sign up. Let's do that. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to type again. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't know why one password isn't just letting me do it, but, anyways. Uh, update sure. sure cool uh okay so we got an error this could be related to do we have to change anything really? in terms of the database schema hmm i think not it should here. be completely Table the public same user does not exist in the current okay. database so i mean so oh, I, I, but, but, table oh but you, sorry sorry but you just have to run the was the was db migrate dev again so it has to apply migrations again you know Oh, okay, so, okay, okay. So let me go back. Yeah, to my so ju program. just run a Wasp DB migrate dev to apply the migrations, and then that's going to work. And yeah. you have deleted all migrations, right? Yeah. Oh, I've got to start the database. Sorry. Yeah. 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 I have to have the database running, obviously, because before it was SQLite. Uh, like yeah. Okay, so that's running. Let's run the migration over here just so folks can see. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. So random out. migrations, we'll say init. Okay, so yeah, the database yeah. is successfully migrated. I'll just exit and that. We have the DB fun. running now. And I'll just come back to wasp start, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. All right, so everything looks good there. So I'll come back to the page now. Let's go to login and I'll mm -hmm. sign up again. And I'll I will not argue with one password this time. I'm just going to type it in. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, update and sign up. Okay, perfect. Uh, so uh, that that was that was pretty quick. I think honestly, t just to, for, for folks who might have just joined, uh, I didn't have Docker installed for desktop, uh, so I installed that, and then uh, uh, I missed one of the steps. But uh, it was pretty quick to migrate the database. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we're essentially back to the same thing. So we'll say like uh, sunflower. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and everything's working as usual. I can log out, I can log in, and so everything's working and we're now on Postgres. Um, cool, yeah. so that's pretty awesome. Yeah, exactly. um, I did have a question for when folks, like when you first get started out, do people typically stay on MySQL for quite a while, or sorry, on SQLite, or do they typically go to Postgres pretty quickly? Yeah, I think you know. I think you you realize it as soon as you need to add some more advanced features. I think for you know, for example, if you want to run cron jobs, you need PostgreSQL because we are using PGBoss and similar. So it's it's cool for starting, but as soon as you want to deploy it, we yeah. basically make you make you switch to Postgres. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we we even thought okay. about removing completely SQLite and you know, just giving you Postgres from start. But it's a bit more of a setup, okay. and we just we just wanted to make sure that people can. Like, you know, try it out really quickly and get that initial feedback loop, you know, oh, it's working, something is ha happening uh, in front of my eyes. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. I think one yeah. thing, th this is me just thinking of things, but um, mm -hmm. it could be interesting, like, because we, when we when we first uh, generated the project with the GPT generator, which I'll drop a link to that again, um, it, like you said, it, it, there was a, a viewer, but not an editor. Uh, I'm curious if you considered stuff like uh, stack blitz integration, or maybe even like, I guess, you know, you don't want to overcomplicate things at the beginning, but like, cause there's like, there's a few options these days. There's like stack blitz. I th I'm not positive, but I think code sandbox supports full stack. Now it used to be only front end. Uh, there's GitHub code spaces. Cause yeah. already I could see like, cause I've, I've set up uh, GitHub, uh, code spaces for things as well as Gitpod. And I wouldn't say it's uh, like super, super straightforward, but it, it's, you're basically just having it run scripts. So like we can run like the wasp start, you know, do the migration yeah. and stuff. So. Um, that's would be yeah. cool. I agree. Uh, we, we just kept it like this for simplicity at start. Uh, but yeah, we would love to. Oh yeah, no, for sure, for sure. We would love to both add this interactivity. So you can, you know, you can either fix your code or just try it out. And you know, even even deploy. Yeah. You know, you could just say, "Hey, hey, deploy to fly from here." So yeah, a, a plenty yeah, yeah. of cool opportunities uh, to to explore. Yeah, no, that that would definitely be uh, cool if you could deploy straight to a provider too. Yeah, that that would yeah. definitely. Um, yeah, we, we, we could all, we could also I, create I, a GitHub repo for you, initialize it immediately, so you get the whole project kind of set up. Yeah, the. Um, the other thing I'm thinking of, just in terms, this is more longer term, but like in terms of the having more reach to places you can deploy to, like obviously uh, Fly.io supports Docker, uh, but they're like platforms like Netlify and Vercel. I don't know if, I don't think Vercel or Netlify support Docker deployments. I'm not positive about that, but like, yeah. I, I wonder if there's like a, uh, you know, like obviously, obviously you know, you want to get something really good and stable first, but uh, I'm just trying to think like long term. This is me just talking away, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, it'd be no, neat yeah, if you it, could have build artifacts for different platforms potentially. Yeah, that, that would be very cool. I mean, in the, initially, actually, you know, our first recommended kind of deployment uh, stack was Netlify plus Heroku. So you will put, you know, you would just manually okay. put stuff on the static files on Netlify, which was great. And Heroku was also nice. Well, they still had their free, free plan. <laughs> But you know, when yeah, they, yeah, yeah. When they, they no when they chuck do, that, yeah. then, then we went for Fly and Railway, which are both pretty nice. Mm, and yeah, Vercel, I'm not sure what it could do. I guess it could be okay for the front end. I guess. Yeah, I yeah, I, I I don't think either of them. I don't think Netlify or Vercel support Docker deployments. I'm not yeah, positive about I, that though. But I um, know I always kind of consider it more yeah. for the front end uh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and there's um, there's other interesting stuff I'm thinking about because uh, I had a stream with um, Glauber Costa, who's the uh, he's a he's one of the co-founders at uh, a database company called Terso, and it's it's not wow. SQLite, it's it's a fork of SQLite, but you you run SQLite locally, and then when you deploy, it's a, it's a SQLite uh, 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 on the edge, which is pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. And uh, yeah. but uh, but yeah, and there's like, uh, again, getting back to like, obviously you're building it out. You want to, you want to get something that's super stable. So like, obviously adding all these new things is not really 
a priority at the moment. Yeah, sure, sure. But but I could see in the future, like I don't know, like people even you know creating their own templates that people could actually consume. You know, or yeah, almost yeah, like a marketplace really to cool. some degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that know. could be really cool. And we even had people who actually build out like some deployment targets. Like so, like one of the contributors was helping us build out railway deployment. So that was really cool to see. So yeah, ideally we would have a place for you to kind of easily add your adapters, either for deployment or yeah. for auth or you know, like sending emails. Uh, we would love all of that to kind of yeah. be as transparent and you know adaptable as possible. Yeah, no, I, the, yeah, going the adapter route makes a lot of sense. Like this is like I've been working on adapters for frameworks at Netlify and it makes sense because like the Wasp core team, for example, they you can't build for literally everything yeah. everybody wants. So if you give that primitive where people can just, you know, tap into the to the to the DSL, I think that that's probably uh, exactly, exactly. And save your sanity. Kind of, <laughs> I think that's kind of, you know, utilizing open source in, in the best way, because, you know, I think it's kind of people often think that, you know, when something is open source, that, you know, other people are actually developing your core features for free. But, you know, it's not the case. Yeah. In ninety yeah, percent yeah, of totally, the totally. cases, it's just really hard for somebody from the outside to get into your core features, develop something and stuff. So, but yeah, but you know, just having help around, for example, docs is great. And if somebody can add adapters for you, that's kind of the super, super big value, in, in my opinion. And you know, that, that's very typically yeah. open source collaboration that happens. I would say, you know, in ninety percent of the of the cases. Yeah, and in terms of the uh, Wasp itself, right now, like you have. So there's a company around, is it safe to say the company's around the DSL, like Wasp Lang itself, that's, that's really the, the core of it. Um, do you, I know you and your brother have obviously worked on it quite a bit. Um, do you have people from the community contributing to it as well? Or is it really more the core team at the moment still? Yeah, I would say it's a combination. I mean, also, you know, one thing is that the kind of core of core of the of our compiler is built is built in Haskell, which is a bit more niche language. Okay. So it's not kind of it's it's not that uh, uh, okay. so all the all, all developers are familiar with it. But actually, surprisingly, yeah, uh, you know, Haskell is kind of more niche language, but it means you know it has some very passionate people who who want to work in it. <laughs> so there are you know may, maybe less Haskell projects out there. So actually, we got a nice number of contributors who were contributing to our Haskell code, which is quite surprising. So uh, that was very cool. But yeah, most of the most of the contributions come in the form or documentation, you know, just kind of brainstorming ideas with us and implementing some parts of. I mean, because in the end, you know, we have core in Haskell, uh, but we have a lot of stuff which is yeah. templates in TypeScript and JavaScript. So it's you know, it's quite okay. it's quite let's say easy to get into TypeScript or JavaScript. So we also have people helping us out uh, there. Yeah, no, yeah, I haven't worked with Haskell. I, I worked at an AI startup in 2017 and 2018, and there was some Scala and I think some Haskell on the back end. And uh, it's it's definitely a terse language, Haskell, from what I remember seeing. Uh, I, I guess it's, it, like you said, it is kind of neat, but, uh, and I, you know, like other projects, like for example, like, you know, there's always a lot of people that want to contribute to like a front end project because there's a lot of yeah, yeah. people that are familiar with it. But, but yeah, I get that you might not have like millions of people saying like, I, I'm going to go contribute to a Haskell project. Um, but it brings up a question though. I'm curious why you decided to go with Haskell. It's a functional programming language, but what were the other reasons for going with Haskell? Yeah, I mean, so there were, there, were, there were like a multiple reasons and, you know, the, the answer definitely isn't black and white, like we could have chosen something else and, you know, it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But a couple of main reasons yeah. for Haskell is that, you know, so I mean, so we wanted something that was fast. Uh, we wanted something that was that was typed, you know, more more times the better, you know, especially when it comes down to compiler. And so those were, this was I, I kind of our initial, you know, set of constraints. So, you know, okay. and I mean, we, we, knew, we knew Haskell from before, we kind of used it academically, but we, we never used it, you know, in the production setting. But we, of course, we want okay. to try it out, you know, see how it works. But also, you know, it turns out that Haskell is especially fine-tuned for compilers. 
So that you know that, that's okay. kind of its real that, that's kind of its real house. You know, uh, most of production use of Haskell is actually for compilers and stuff like that. So it really has like you know good libraries, okay. uh, good support, good best practices. So that was already great. So I think we were kind of you know either we would use Haskell. We actually started to, we actually wanted to start with C plus plus initially, and Mark we kind of created the repository okay. and started coding. But that's like super low level, you know. That's like pretty low level, and really to get anything done, uh, has a lot of extra okay. work. I think maybe like only the one interesting choice would have been Rust. You know, when we were starting mm -hmm. out, uh, Rust, Rust wasn't so prominent and we haven't had so much exposure to it. And I mean, okay, although yeah. maybe Haskell is, is a bit more high level and it's even it's a bit kind of more, let's say, uh, fine tuned for compilers. It is just, you know, Rust has such a big community, right? And people, you know, people like it so much. Yeah. So I think if we were starting out, if we were starting out right now, we would have given Rust a serious consideration. You know, just of the, just okay. because of the community and you know because of the popularity it enjoys right now, but you know just purely in terms of functionality and uh, kind of technical specifications, Haskell is like a really good choice. And you know, I think our yeah, main gotcha. thing is that we have to, you know, there is like a there is a movement which is called boring Haskell, which means you know you stick to the most okay. basic things in Haskell, and because in Haskell you have Haskell. but then you have you know like Haskell, <laughs> which is actually you know people okay. building on top of adding more abstractions, adding more stuff, you know, which are not even part of the kind of maybe official language. And it's, it's very easy to okay, get okay. lost in the old language extensions, right? So you know, people often say, if you're yeah. building for production, stick to boring Haskell, use simple stuff. It's already enough innovation that you're, <laughs> you're, that you're using Haskell uh, in the first place. So, you know, really, if you stick to oh, that, oh. it's actually, it, it isn't that terrible uh, to keep going in it. And it's actually, it's actually quite accessible for people even who don't know Haskell yet. So I mean, all of our all of okay. our developers who, who joined the team, uh, none of them had Haskell experience before. You know, maybe, maybe just some oh, like okay. small or something, but you know, they were just mostly senior developers who have seen multiple languages, and you know, in, in a matter of like month to three months, they were all like you know, eighty percent productive in our code base. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're just thrown into it, because like. I've worked in a few languages. I mean, JavaScript, and I've, I've been doing TypeScript since like. 2015 and I did C sharp before that a uh, bit of Java in university they yeah. interestingly enough they we started off with C++ in university and they shifted to uh, managed memory language Java which uh, I in re at the time I didn't really know any better but like thinking about it now it seems odd to me that they would have done that because like part of learning it would have been understanding how to manage the memory you know and stuff yeah. so yeah, um, yeah exactly but uh but yeah no and yeah like I, I guess once you get thrown into a code base you know you you just basically have to learn it you know like okay i don't know haskell i'm just gonna do it you know so that's yeah, how i would do it um, once you have no choice you you know, you'll learn quickly <laughs> yeah 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 Cool, cool. Yeah, no, and I'm thinking about it. When I was at the AI startup, one of the backend devs actually created like a small, small language. I'm not saying small in the sense to to demean it. Uh, it was just like it was a small language for something that was required at work. Um, and I believe I can't remember if he did if he did it in Haskell or Scala because they were using both on the backend. But uh, but that, but that's interesting that. Uh, Haskell is is really optimized for compilers. Is that just because it's like is it it's not like a low a low level language like C, is it? Or no, no, no. It is. It's, it's actually much higher level. It's you know it's even higher level languages yeah. that kind of you know Java or I mean you could even say JavaScript. Okay. Because, you know, I think you know one reason is just that it has so developed types because types are kind of important. Okay. You know when you are when you are you know kind of stretching and showing around all these like trees tree structures and data stuff. So that's very helpful. And it is just that community kind of fine tuned it themselves. So there is like a lot of good libraries like parsers, uh, you know, like generators. There, there is basically okay. a whole like, you know, like a whole tool chain you can already use for for the majority of stuff you might need for a compiler. Okay, gotcha. Kind of like how Python is for, for data science. Uh, okay, exactly. Or you know, like, like, I know, like Go yeah. is great for something. Uh, Elixir is great for concurrency. You know, like everybody has their own okay. kind of a niche. Awesome. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, so 
I've, I've dropped links to the GPT generator again in Wasp Lang. Uh, curious, kind of like, uh, I don't know if you're able to share, but like in the in the next year or so, like what are what are the plans for Wasp Lang? Is, is continue with the adapters like you were mentioning, or, or what's your if you can share them, like what's kind of like on the roadmap for the next 12 months? Yeah, of course, of course. We don't have like a high level roadmap on our page, so I will just drop it here for you. I go to boss yeah, I'll go grab uh, that and drop that. In the slash channel. roadmap. I will just put it here at Discord. But yeah, no, I would say I would say moving forward, we have two main directions. Uh, you know, one, one okay. is kind of horizontal, as you said. You know, building out more adapters. Which is you know always helpful. Okay. So you know, I would say we, we kind of want to circle out you know the React uh, no story for now. You know just kind of add mm -hmm. more support for I know for auth like more email providers uh, stuff stuff like that. And then on the other yeah. hand, you know like we also want to put uh, let's say like there, there's a lot of cool stuff that we could do to make your life easier. You know especially because you know Wasp is aware of your data schema. And, you know, basically from, yeah. from knowing your all preferences, like we can generate the full components for your, for your authentication. You know, you, you just plug it in and it works. You know, we could do the same for forms, uh, like let, let's say for all that, you know, typical crap business logic that you still now have to write yourself. We could actually pre-generate mm -hmm. a lot of stuff for you. So I would say, you know, kind, kind okay. of, we, we call that uh, like top level data, data schema. You know, the more we know about your schema, okay. the more we know about your authorization, authentication, we can actually like, you know, make a lot of stuff upfront for you. You know, like we can support okay, roles, yeah. we can support, you know, like different uh, guest admin and all that stuff. So I would say one okay. direction is kind of like, you know, having more understanding of your domain in terms of user and data structures. And yeah, another is, you know, just yeah. kind of having all, having more, more adapters. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I'm I'm really excited about the project. It's uh, you know still pretty new to me, but uh, cl clearly there's interest in it. Otherwise, uh, Y Combinator <laughs> wouldn't have uh, accepted your application. So, uh, um, yeah, thank but yeah, you. no, that's no, super awesome. Yeah, uh, and I was gonna say like. So the team, uh, we'll kind of wrap up here, but like the team right now, it's you and your brother and imagine it's a small team still. Uh, yeah, so right now it's uh, six of us. So we have you know, five, five people working okay. full time on it. Plus, you know, we have one summer intern who's helping us uh, with a lot, of, a lot of compiler stuff. Oh, okay. So cool. yeah, quite, quite a small, uh, versatile team, but uh, we, are pretty, you know, we are pretty happy with the team. Kind of moving fast, uh, everybody's doing everything. So you know, we are now at a pretty exciting uh, stage. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Well, uh, yeah, I just want to say congrats again on the YC and like, I'm excited to see where things go with, uh, with Wasp and, um, yeah. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to mention before we go, but, uh, like I said, I dropped the, uh, sorry, my eyeball is something's in it. Um, no worries. yeah, I dropped the link to Wasp Lang as well as the GPT generator. If folks want to check that out, um, if, if you're tuning in late, I see a few people joining now. Um, at the start of the stream, we used the GPT generator to create a, a plants app and we got up and running pretty quick. Uh, use a SQLite at the beginning, um, but we did a migration uh, later on in the stream to Postgres. Um, so there's uh, there's definitely a story there where you can you don't have to be stuck on SQLite, but it's, it's pretty quick to get up and running. Um, and yeah, I'll just summarize too, like there's no package JSON uh, because the, the main.wasp file is, and the wasp CLI is what you use to uh, add new dependencies. Um, so that's, that's something that you might find surprising if you're using it for the first time. Um, yeah, and aside from that, uh, yeah, I just want to thank you again. I know one, you've got your newborn, you've got your business, you're super <laughs> busy. So I, I really do appreciate you taking the time to, to stop by Quite and, nice and hang out with me today. Awesome. Um, no, it was, it was, very, it was mention... very nice catching up. Yeah. Sorry, go on. Sorry. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, 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 Go ahead. I, I was going to talk about next week's schedule, but go ahead. Uh, sorry, I cut you off. No, I just want to say also, thank you very much for inviting me and having me over. I was looking forward to it for a while. And yeah, we had to reschedule, as you said, because of my newborn was born. But yeah, I'm really, I'm really Very happy we got to do this. And yeah, I'm looking also, for, I, I hope that, you know, we can also catch up sometimes again in the future, maybe even, you know, in person. 
and yeah, just just super nice to be part of uh, of this community. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Thanks for the kind words. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to mention to folks uh, next week, uh, I'm going to be hanging out with Daniel Rowe from the Nux.js core team. Uh, we're going to learn about Nux. I haven't used Nux myself. I've done very little view as well. Um, so we're going to talk about that and we're probably going to build out something silly, I imagine. Um, I'll drop a link to that if folks want to check it out. And yeah, thanks again, Matija, uh, Matia. And um, I'll see you all next week, folks. And uh, Matia, if you just don't mind staying on for just a second. Awesome. Later, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye.